Hey everyone, it's your friend Joseph Craven here with the numbers game for week seven in the SEC. I'm joined as always by my co-host, Radar O'Reilly, the four-month-old puppy who's currently trying to chew on literally everything in my house. If she wasn't so adorable, I'd probably be a little bit upset. As mentioned, this is the numbers game, and this is where we look at just the raw statistics uh, throughout week seven. Um, just the numbers themselves, no opinion, no discussion, anything crazy or major like that. Just to look at how the games ended up, um, what players did what from a statistical standpoint, and uh, along with uh, ranking changes, players of the week, according to the SEC, all of that sort of stuff. That's what we're looking at. Let's dive right in. You heard that. That was the sound of the dog literally falling off of the guest bed. This is unbelievable. All right. Here are the scores on the week. Florida defeated Vanderbilt 37-27 and in comeback victory. Auburn lost to Tennessee. Tennessee uh, took the lead late in the game, or in the third quarter, I mean, and won 30-24. LSU upset Georgia 36-16. Texas A&M held off a late South Carolina surge to win 26-23. Alabama and Missouri had an interesting matchup, 39-10. Missouri trying to put up a fight on defense for sure. Most notably, of course, to attack of Iloa. The uh, quarterback for the Crimson Tide went out with that nagging knee injury. And Ole Miss defeated Arkansas in the wildest game of the weekend, which is saying something because there are a lot of wild games, 37 to 33. Let's look at the statistics for each of those games that we just mentioned. So Florida and Vanderbilt will give the statistics for the losing side first. This was an interesting matchup. Vanderbilt at one point in time had a 21 to 10 lead before the Gators came back. And in the fourth quarter, early in the fourth, beginning of the fourth, took a 27-21 lead. Um, from there, it was... Almost entirely Gators. 37-27 was that final. Vanderbilt slinger Kyle Shermer went 18 of 36 for 229 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. It was Keyshawn Vaughn that really powered a lot of the Commodore offense while he was in the game. Seven rushing attempts for 56 yards, a nice healthy eight-yard average. And he had one 75-yard touchdown reception, a nice screen that he took control of. Vaughn, of course, had to leave the game early due to injury, um, which was uh, devastating to the Commodores' offense. Also in the rushing game, Jamari Wakefield had eight carries for 32 yards and one touchdown on the ground. Kyrie Blazing game, five carries for only 16 yards. Along with that, their leading wide receiver, Kalija Lipscomb, had one 15-yard carry. As mentioned, Keyshawn Vaughn led the way in yardage with 75 yards. He only had one reception, but he took it to the house. Behind him, Lipscomb had four catches for 64 yards. Tight end Jared Pinckney, three catches, 25 yards, one touchdown. On the other side for Florida, Felipe Franks had a decent day throwing the ball, 19 of 29, for 284 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Uh, he did have the one fumble as well, but all in all, a solid outing from, from Franks, who is week by week, it seems, improving as a quarterback. Um... LaMichael P. Ryan led the way with 23 carries for 121 yards, one touchdown on the ground. And Jordan Scarlett had 16 carries for 113 yards and one touchdown. Uh, so lots of rushing yards there for the Gators. Not only that, but their freshman, Damian Pierce, kind of their knockout punch running back when they need a fresh legs at the end of the game, came in and rushed the ball 10 times for 40 yards. LaMichael Pirine led the way through the air as well for the Gators. Just a yardage machine. Four catches for 93 yards. Van Jefferson had three catches, 65 yards, one touchdown. Tyree Cleveland and Josh Hammond had a pair of catches apiece. Cleveland, 29 yards. Hammond, 27. Tight end Morrill Stevens, one catch for 26 yards. And Freddie Swain added one 11-yard touchdown catch for the Florida Gators. In Tennessee and Auburn, we'll look at Auburn first and foremost. Quarterback Jarrett Stidham, 28 out of 45 passes, completing, um, a, attempting rather, quite a few passes on the day. He threw for 322 yards and two touchdowns, however, also had two interceptions. The leading rusher 
for the Auburn Tigers' struggling running game was wide receiver Anthony Schwartz, which is not a great look, but he had 44 yards on the ground on three carries. Jatarvius Whitlow had 12 carries, leading the uh, the Tigers in that category, but only 42 yards, and a sophomore Malik Miller added six carries for 32 yards behind him. Freshman wide receiver Seth Williams uh, led the way through the air with five catches, 85 yards, one touchdown. Schwartz added two catches for 83 yards and a touchdown. Not only that, but that uh, running back Malik Miller had six catches, 57 yards, and wide receiver Ryan Davis had seven catches, also for 57 yards. On the other side, Jarrett Guarantano. I guess I didn't realize until right now that this was the battle of the Jarretts, but Jarrett Guarantano had the better day for sure, not just did his team get the victory, but he completed 21 of 32 passes for 328 yards, two touchdowns, a nice 10.3-yard average. Ty Chandler on the ground. Uh, ran the ball 16 times for 50 yards. And Tim Jordan, the sophomore running back, added 13 carries, but for only 26 yards. Through the air, the Volunteers had a pretty solid day. Many receivers with, or uh, receivers slash running backs, with multiple receptions um, to their credit. The first is Josh Palmer, wide receiver with three catches for 84 yards. Behind him, you have Juwan Jennings, Five catches, 71 yards, one touchdown. Ty Chandler, the running back, had five receptions as well with 62 yards. That's one touchdown, too. Marquez Callaway added two catches for 55 yards. And running back Tim Jordan, two catches for 23 yards as the Volunteers took down the Auburn Tigers. LSU pulled off a big-time upset to climb back into the top five in the rankings. They defeated Georgia, of course. Georgia quarterback Jake Fromm went 16 of 34 for 209 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Not a good day for the QB1. DeAndre Swift and Elijah Holyfield, as always, in the backfield. Um, Ended up with decent uh, yardage amounts, but Swift with 12 attempts on 72 yards. Holyfield, seven attempts, 56 yards, one touchdown. The running game doing better than the passing attack, but sadly, it seems the Georgia Bulldogs were relying more on the passing attack as the game went on and the lead was too big. Riley Ridley had three catches for 75 yards and one touchdown. Isaac Noada had three catches as well. That's the Georgia tight end, 47 yards. And Jeremiah Hollerman, Hollerman? Hmm, Holloman had three catches as well, 26 yards. For the winning Louisiana State Bayou Bengals. Joe Burrow completed 50% of his passes exactly, 15 of 30 for 200 yards. Very clean numbers there for Joe Burrow. 50% for 200 yards. That's very nice. Clyde Edwards Hilaire led the way with 19 carries, 145 yards. Joe Burrow, 13 carries, 66 yards, two touchdowns. Nick Brossett, only 16 carries, 64 yards, but he still got one touchdown. No big surprise that it was wide receiver Justin Jefferson who led LSU through the air. Six receptions, 108 yards. Terrace Marshall Jr. had two catches for 43 yards. And those are really the only notable receiving stats for LSU. I don't know if it's just like being Southern or what it is, but I will always end up pronouncing that as LSU. And that's just kind of how it's going to be. Whatever. And one of the weird games of the weekend, Texas A&M defeated South Carolina 26-23. to of course, this one was notable because it was 13 nothing at half in favor of A&M and 16 nothing once the third quarter got going after an A&M field goal. And then South Carolina was able to score two touchdowns and two-point conversions in the third quarter to tie it up. So it was 16-16 going into the fourth, which makes for a very interesting game. However, A&M was able to pull out the victory. Let's look at the stats on the losing side for South Carolina Gamecocks. Quarterback Jake Bentley returned in this game, completing 17 passes out of 35 attempts for 223 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. The running back duo of Tyson Williams and Rico Dowdle for South Carolina uh, did not have their best performance. Williams, seven attempts for 48 yards, a very nice 6.9 yard average. But Dowdle, seven attempts, 19 yards, only 2.7 yards per carry. Bentley added four rushing attempts as well for nine yards. Through the air, it was uh, Debo Samuel leading the way, seven catches, 88 yards, one touchdown. Behind him, 
Uh, wide receiver She Smith, three catches, 55, 51 yards, rather, and one touchdown. Brian Edwards, wide receiver, added four catches for 42 yards. Um, after that, you had Ch- Chavis Dawkins with one catch. It was a 33-yard touchdown reception. And that is it, offensively speaking, for the South Carolina Gamecocks. On the other side of things, Kellen Mond, 25 of 37 passing, 353 yards, one touchdown through the air. The other running back named Williams, of course, uh, Travion Williams, the breakout star of the Texas A&M offense this season, had 19 carries for 78 yards, one touchdown, averaging only about 4.1 yard per carry. Kellen Mond had 13 rushing attempts for 25 yards, and then they also let uh, another running back, Jay Sean Corbin, a freshman, attempt five rushes for only 21 yards. Tight end Jay Sternberger adding to an already impressive resume as far as things go for him. Seven catches for 145 yards and a touchdown. Very, very impressive game there. He wasn't the only uh, target for the Aggies who did well. Sophomore wide receiver Courtney Davis added nine catches for 127 yards. Cameron Buckley, Buckley? Hmm, Buckley, Cameron Buckley had three catches for 44 yards. And finally, Hezekiah Jones, which is the most Texas name I've ever heard in my entire life. He is from Stafford, Texas. That's a sophomore wide receiver who also had three catches only for 24 yards. Alabama defeated Missouri by a score of 39 to 10. This game was 13 to 10 at the end of the first quarter quarter after Drew Locke completed a 20-yard touchdown pass to Jalen Knox. However, after that, it was all tied. Missouri did not get anything after the end of the first quarter as far as points go. Let's look at their statistics. Drew Locke only went 13 of 26 for 142 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Um, The Missouri offense just not on the field very much. Larry Roundtree the third, their running back, had 17 rushing attempts for 48 yards. Tyler Beatty had six carries for 41 yards. And Demaria Crockett had seven rushing attempts, only getting eight yards on the ground. Through the air, as mentioned, it was Jalen Knox that had the lone receiving touchdown. He also had 61 yards on three catches. Albert Aquig... Aquig... <laughs> My bad. I jumped full on into that last name before preparing myself. Aquig Boonham... That's Albert Aguig Boonham, had four catches for 47 yards. Ugh. Sorry to everyone that had to listen to me struggle through that. For the Crimson Tide, two attack of Iloa went 12 of 22 for 265 yards, three touchdowns before exiting the game, uh, aggravating that knee injury that happened in practice at some point in the last couple of weeks. Jalen Hurts came in, completed seven of eight passes for 115 yards. It's a shame that as a backup quarterback, they just... You know, don't have anyone that can efficiently move the ball. Um, Wow. Damian Harris had 14 carries for 62 yards and a touchdown. Najee Harris, 13 carries, 57 yards. And I'll tell you what, the Tide were all about spreading around the carries in this particular game. Josh Jacobs also had nine carries for 52 yards. So pretty even rushing stats across the board there for the Crimson Tide. Quarterback duo of Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa had a couple of attempts. Hurts, in particular, got uh, 15 yards to his credit on three carries. Tagovailoa, negative five on two carries. So let's just forget about that. Brian Robinson Jr., the other, other Alabama running back, had four carries, but for only three yards. Jerry Judy continued an absolutely dominant wide receiver performance uh, or, or season rather three catches for 147 yards and a touchdown averaging a stupid 49 yards per carry per catch I mean just a just wow I mean the season he's having uh very very impressive Devonta Smith had four care or catches for 100 yards and a touchdown Henry Ruggs the third four catches 50 yards Damian Harris added two catches out of the backfield for 31 yards and the other receiving touchdown on the day went to Irv Smith Jr., the tight end. Just a little two-yard uh, touchdown reception, but, you know, he'll take that any day. Finally, Ole Miss and Arkansas had a wild one that saw the Rebels take a lead with less than a minute to go and ended up winning 37-33. to 
For the Razorbacks, Ty Story completed 12 of 16 passes for 122 yards and a touchdown. He, of course, had a uh, pretty nasty injury when he decided not to run out of bounds on a scramble where he really, really should have run out of bounds on a scramble. Quarterback Cole Kelly stepped in. Uh, Kelly, of course, his first pass was a 39-yard touchdown pass. His second pass went for 21 yards. He missed on three other passing attempts, including an interception. His final stats were 2 of 5, 60 yards, one touchdown, one pick. And oddly enough, wide receiver Jared Cornelius attempted one pass that went for negative 5 yards. Rakeem the Dream Boyd carried the ball seven times for 109 yards and a touchdown. He's been having a very good season now that he has broken into the uh, road, constant rotation in Arkansas. However, he had to also leave the game. Ty Story carried the ball nine times, 70 yards. Devwa Wally came in, 12 rushing attempts for 67 yards. Chase Hayden, 12 attempts, 30 yards. Cole Kelly, seven attempts for 25 yards. Nothing like having a 6'7", 265-pound quarterback scrambling the ball with the ball. LaMichael Petway had uh, three receptions for 77 yards and a touchdown. Cheyenne O'Grady, the tight end, three catches, 41 yards, and a touchdown. Behind them, Rakeem Boyd had two catches out of the backfield, 36 yards. And Michael Woods, the freshman from Magnolia, Texas, added two catches as well, but for only 14 yards. Let's switch over to the powerful offense of the Ole Miss Rebels. Jordan Ta'amu, 26 of 35 for 300 87 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, almost 400 yards passing in the game. Not only that, and here's the crazy stat here to me, Tamu added 17 rushing attempts for 141 yards and a touchdown. He has not been scrambling too much this season, but he did in this game, and boy, did they need every single yard that he could offer. Really impressive performance Tamu for Tamu. We'll get to more on him a little bit later on. Running back Scotty Phillips, 18 carries for 86 yards and a touchdown. And running back Isaiah Woolard got a touchdown the day as well. However, his only other carry went for negative yardage. So technically he had uh, two rushing attempts for negative one yard and a touchdown. So he ran backwards for a touchdown, according to this. The tight end duo of Octavius Cooley and Dawson Knox had a good day through the air for the Rebels. Cooley had two catches but got 85 yards and a touchdown out of that. Most of those yards coming off of a 66-yard touchdown reception, but any time that you have two catches and they're for 66 yards, and what is that, 19 yards as well, that's a pretty solid outing right there. DeMarcus Lodge, 10 catches, 80 yards and a touchdown. As mentioned before, Dawson Knox, the other tight end, two catches, 65 yards. Star receiver A.J. Brown had six catches for 64 yards. D.K. Metcalf, one catch, 49 yards. Braylon Sanders, three catches, 35 yards. And, of course, the news has come out that D.K. Metcalf will miss the rest of the season due to an injury sustained in this game. Heartbreaking news for the youngster. Um, the uh, the homegrown talent. He's from Oxford, Mississippi. His uh, father, I believe, Chandler told me before, played at Ole Miss. So local legend, homegrown talent, wish him a quick recovery, and hopefully this will not get in the way of the rest of his football career. That's it for the scores. Let's look at what has happened in the rankings. No change in the number one spot. Alabama hold on, holds on to that in both the AP and the coaches poll. However, of course, with that loss to LSU, Georgia has dropped out of number two. LSU has climbed to number five in both polls. That's an eight points climb in the AP, seven uh, spot climb in the coaches. Georgia slips to number eight in the AP poll, down six spots. In the coaches, they only slip down four spots to number six. Florida has climbed up to the number 11 spot in the AP, going up three spots. Number 12 in the coaches, rapidly climbing there, going up four spots. They were unranked in the coaches poll just two weeks ago. Kentucky, who had a bye week, benefited from that, going up four spots in the AP. Only three spots in the coaches. They're at number 14 in the AP, number 17 in the coaches poll. Texas A&M is up five spots in the AP poll. Uh, they are now number 17. They're number 18 in the coaches poll, up four spots. And Mississippi State is in the AP poll, but not the coaches poll. They're at number 22 in the AP. That's up two spots from the number 24 spot that they were in after defeating Auburn two weeks ago. 
Auburn has dropped out of the AP and the coaches' polls. In the AP, there are no other SEC teams receiving votes. However, in the coaches' poll, Mississippi State has 110 votes there. So right on the verge of getting back into the coaches' poll as well. The SEC has released their offensive, defensive, all of the players of the week. There's co-offensive players of the week here. Two quarterbacks, one from Ole Miss, Mr. Jordan Tamu, accounted for 528 total yards and three touchdowns, um, including uh, a lot of the yardage, um, being responsible for a lot of the yardage on the 97-yard touchdown drive that um, ended up winning the game for them in the final two minutes of the fourth quarter. As mentioned, 26 of 35 passing, 387 yards, two touchdowns through the air, 141 yards rushing, that's a career high, finishing just 37 yards shy of the single game rushing record by a Rebel QB, and his 528 total yards is the second most in school history. Archie Manning's the only one to have more, 540 yards against Alabama in 1969. Jarrett Guarantano of Tennessee is the other co-offensive player of the week. He had career highs in passing, attempts, and completions. That's 328 yards, 32 attempts, 21 completions, and through two touchdowns. The redshirt sophomore led Tennessee to its first win at Auburn in 20 years. Not only that, but most notably, he was 11 of 14 on third down, including being 8 of 8 when it was third and 8 or longer. That was Tennessee's first SEC victory in 11 games, giving them also an upset victory of a ranked team on the road for the first time since 2006. On defense, linebacker Devin White was the defensive player of the week out of LSU. He led the Bayou Bengals with a season-high 13 tackles. He also had a half tackle for loss, recovered a fumble, and had a quarterback hurry. Georgia's offense was averaging 42 points and 485 total yards a game so far this season. Of course, against LSU, they only had 16 points, 322 total yards, and only 113 yards on the ground. Cole Tracy, also from LSU, is the uh, player, the special teams player of the week, the place kicker, is the second player in LSU history to kick five field goals in a game. He went five of five, tying the school record of five that was held by Josh Jasper, who he set uh, in 2010. He also added three uh, point after attempts to finish with 18 points, setting an LSU record for most points scored by kicking in one game. He had makes from 33, 36, 39, 24, and 30 yards out. He is now connected on his last eight straight field goals. His only two misses on the season have gone, come from 53 yards out. He's gone 17 of 19 so far in the year. The freshman of the week, Apparently, once again, another slow week for all freshmen. But that's Evan McPherson, the kicker out of Florida. He has made 11 of his 12 college field goal attempts so far. In Florida's victory over Vanderbilt, he knocked in from 21, 25, and 43 yards. He's also been perfect on PATs, 25 of 25 so far on the season. Offensive lineman of the week was Jedrick Wills Jr., the tackle from Alabama. He turned in one of the best games of his career, grading out at 91%. He's graded out at 90% or better in the last two games, accounting for four knockdown blocks, did not surrender a sack or a pressure, has not allowed a sack all season. That's through 402 snaps that he's been on the uh, field for so far on the year. And the defensive lineman of the week is Kyle Phillips, a defensive end from Tennessee, put in, pulling in a career-high nine tackles, a half sack, and a forced fumble that ended up leading to a touchdown in the victory over Auburn. He forced Auburn quarterback Jarrett Stidham to fumble in the third quarter. Alante Taylor, his teammate, scooped up the ball for the touchdown that pushed the Volunteers' lead out to 10, 27-17. All right, let's look at a quick recap of the statistical leaders so far on the year before we end this episode of the numbers game. As far as passing yardage goes, Jordan Tamu still up there at the top in the conference. Uh, I mean, almost 500 yards ahead of second place. He's thrown for 2,298 yards so far. Kellen Mond, 1,800 yards in second place. Third place to attack of Iloa of Alabama, 1,760 yards. And we have a tie in fourth and fifth place, Kyle Shermer and Drew Locke. And Drew Locke, not Andrew Locke. I wasn't calling him by his full name. They both have 1,629 yards so far. 
As far as touchdowns go, Tua Tagovailoa leads the way with 21 through the air. Jordan Ta'amu, 15. Felipe Franks tied as well with 15. They're tied for second place. Behind them is Jake Fromm of Georgia with 13 and Drew Locke of Missouri with 12 to round out the top five. Rushing yardage leaders so far on the year. Travion Williams of Texas A&M leads the way 798 yards to this point on the season. Benny Snell of Kentucky, despite not playing last week, is still in second place with 724 yards. He's just one yard ahead of third place Scotty Phillips of Ole Miss. That's 723 yards. Nick Brossett of Louisiana State University, 640 yards. And rounding out the top five is Mississippi State quarterback Nick Fitzgerald with 513 yards. Most notably on this, uh, all of these men are also in the top five as far as rushing attempts go. Travion Williams has now taken the number one spot as far as rushing attempts with 139 yards. I'm sorry, attempts. <laughs> Nick Brosette of LSU, 134. Benny Snell of Kentucky, 128. Scotty Phillips of Ole Miss with 108. And Nick Fitzgerald with 98. Rakeem the Dream Boyd from Arkansas leads the... Uh, leads the conference in rushing yards per attempt. His average is at 7.6 yards. Elijah Holyfield of Georgia is behind him, 7.5 yards per attempt. Kylan Hill of Mississippi State, a clean seven yards. Keyshawn Vaughn of Vanderbilt, 6.9 yards per attempt. And Scotty Phillips of Ole Miss is 6.7 yards per rushing attempt to round out the top five. To put that in perspective, Scotty Phillips is not only fifth in the conference in yards per carry, he's also fourth in the conference in rushing attempts on the year. A very impressive, impressive season so far for Scotty Phillips in his uh, first season as the running back at Ole Miss. Along with that, uh, mostly familiar names as far as the leaders in rushing touchdowns. Scotty Phillips and Nick Brosette are tied at the top with nine rushing touchdowns. Travion Williams, Benny Snell Jr., tied behind them with eight, and Nick Fitzgerald of Mississippi State has seven. So almost identical <laughs> um, when it comes to uh, the top five in rushing yards, attempts, and touchdowns. The only real changes are the players that are leading the league in yards per carry. Jerry Judy is leading the conference in receiving yards. He is in the top spot with 705 yards. A.J. Brown of Ole Miss is behind him with 650 yards. Also, D.K. Metcalf of Ole Miss is in third place with 569 yards. As mentioned, though, D.K. Metcalf's season is sadly over, uh, ruled out for the rest of the year with a neck injury. Vanderbilt's Khalid Lipscomb is in third, I mean, sorry, fourth place with 560 yards. And Jay Sternberger, the tight end from Texas A&M, is in fifth place with 496 yards. He, of course, had one heck of a game this past weekend. Jerry Judy also leads the conference in receiving touchdowns with nine. There's a three-way tie behind them for the next play behind him for the next place. Jay Sternberger of AM, Henry Ruggs the third, wide receiver from Alabama, and Collegia Lipscomb of Vanderbilt all have six. And then behind them, DK Metcalf of Ole Miss, Riley Ridley of Georgia, and Brian Edwards of South Carolina all are tied with five receiving touchdowns. Your leading tacklers on the year, Dijon Harris of Arkansas leads the way with 77 total tackles. That's both solo and assisted. Jordan Griffin of Vanderbilt has 68 total tackles. Devin White of LSU, 66. Deshaun Davis of Auburn, 59. And Santos Ramirez of Arkansas with 53. Montez Sweat of Mississippi State still leads the conference in sacks, but despite not playing this past weekend with eight. Ja'Kai Polite of Florida has seven tied with him as Isaiah Bugs of Alabama with seven. Josh Allen comes in behind them. That's from Kentucky, of course, with six. And there's a two-way tie, DeAndre Walker of Georgia and Kingsley Kiki of Texas A&M with five sacks behind them. Four-way tie for the lead in terms of interceptions. I think this is pretty much the exact same as it was um, last weekend, if I remember correctly. But you have Grant Delpy of Louisiana State with three. Savion Smith of Alabama with three, Darius West of Kentucky with three, and Rashad Fenton of South Carolina with three. A slew of players behind them have two. We won't get into that. But let's look at the cornerbacks that have defended the most passes successfully. There's a clean top five here. DeAndre Baker of Georgia has eight passes defended to his record. 
Cameron Dantzler of Mississippi State and Christian Fulton of Louisiana State are tied with seven. Marcus Ac of Missouri and Trevon Diggs of Alabama are tied behind them with six. And while we're here, let's just throw out the fact that uh, two players in particular have forced the most fumbles so far on the season. There's a lot of players that have forced two fumbles, but Ja'Kai Polite of Florida has forced four, and DeAndre Walker of Georgia has forced three. That's going to wrap up this episode of the Numbers Game, then, of Week 7 in the SEC. I'm your friend Joseph Craven. Thank you again for listening to this episode and getting freshened up on all of the statistics that came out of Week 7. We'll see you next week in another episode of the Numbers Game.